Hey YouTube, it's JP Dillon. Welcome to part five. Yes, part five. Part five of the Fisher 450T repair. Uh, we're going to finish this one up, uh, redo the power supply on it, replace the last couple of remaining caps in the AM radio, and then we're just going to button it. Um, so let me show you what we're working with here. So this guy is the power supply board. Um, Pretty straightforward, really. You've got a Zener diode here establishing a regulated voltage, a driver transistor, and then an alpha transistor. Uh, I believe this is all for the radio, the constant 12 volts for the radio. So these caps don't look terrible. They're not bulging. They're still in good shape ESR-wise and stuff, but the owner requested that I change them all out which is completely understandable. So let me show you what I have because these are somewhat unique. Uh, the big caps, you've got plus and minus there, but then you've got a third lead for stability. And we need to replicate that stability. Uh, otherwise, the caps will just be flopping around and being pulled on with gravity, which will fatigue the leads and cause them to break. So um, I either need to drill holes in the board and run a zip tie through, which I'm not really fond of, or we need to attach brackets to the capacitors and then solder that stability lead to the bracket uh, that's holding the capacitor. And these guys are just, you know, kind of straightforward. We're just soldering in caps in place of the old ones using the leads because all I have is radials for that. And then these ones are just kind of what they are. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is cut out the old ones. And then we'll look at our options as far as mounting the new capacitors. So we're just going to snip them out. Eventually we'll have to pull this board up to do the little guys. But you can see there's no venting, there's no bulge. But he wants them changed out, so... That's what we're going to do. And let me just mark this here. And then I'll show you what I'm working with as far as the replacements. So as you can see the old ones are 2000 microfarad, 55 volt. And my replacements are these United Chemicon 5600 at 56 volts. These were for another project that uh, never went anywhere because the customer bailed on it. So these will be pretty much perfect. For this application a little more punch with a little more reserve but not enough that it's going to hurt the rectifier diodes because it's got four three amp diodes uh should be more than enough to handle the little bit of inrush that that's going to create a difference not very much at all actually so let's see how we're going to mount them so as you can see they pretty much take the entire space of the original ones and then some there's our stability lead back there and then there's our leads, which I'm going to loop and solder to there. Uh, th and then what I'm worried about is gravity letting this flop around since this doesn't have a rear terminal for stability. So what I'm thinking of doing is attaching some brackets to it, uh, to the capacitors themselves, and then soldering that control, that tension lead to the bracket. So let me show you what I'm thinking about. So ignoring the capacitor, these are the brackets I have in mind. These capacitors are the same diameter as the other ones. I get these brackets every time I scrap out uh, an old Japanese machine or I do a recap job with smaller caps that just require a terminal strip instead of these brackets. And I save them because they're useful for situations like this. So what I'm going to do is wrap this bracket around that capacitor and then uh, loop and solder the uh, stability wire through the bracket to secure it in place. So now you can kind of see what I'm doing here. We're going to shave that bottom ear off. Um, or maybe I'll leave it there. Not really sure. Or I could loop it through that too. Yeah, maybe I can just do that. And then we'll bend this top ear down and solder it to it. So let's see how well that works. Okay, so here it is. You see I've got it soldered in over here. And then I snipped off the top brackets and the side ears, and I just used the bottom bracket, 
ran the stabilization lead through it and soldered to it so it's very stable and I'll just do that with the next one and we should be good to go and then we can focus on the other guys okay so we got both soldered in now we're both happy the brackets are holding them in place they're nice and stable so now it's just basically cutting these guys out and replacing them with some radials with maybe a little bit of adhesive to hold them in place okay so we have the 1050 in here and the 470 at 100 which used to be a 500 at 80. in both cases the leads of the new capacitors were too short so i just made uh loops and soldered them to the existing leads so they're good to go and i'll put a little dab of glue on each side of one to hold it in place uh, once we're done with this board but now comes the fun part because we have to take the board up in order to re replace the three remaining capacitors there um, but that's just a matter of you know making a diagram and disconnecting a bunch of stuff i just need to do it enough to tilt the board up uh, so we'll have to experiment i mean obviously everything along this side here has to get disconnected and then we'll kind of tilt it up like that just enough to get that stuff out and uh, before i do that let's do the other thousand microfarad uh, up top which is this guy here next to uh, the tuner boards it's probably just a buffer for the tuner but he has to come out still tests okay it's starting to get a little bit of bulge there around the top so definitely got to go but i think it's just going to be a matter of uh, clip it out and put in a new one and that's that there so i just opted again to use the old leads attached added a little bit of shrink tubing here to cover them up and put a little bit of glue underneath it so it doesn't move around much but uh, that should definitely help that and so we'll get to the pulling up the power supply board and then after we're done there we'll replace those two caps there and the couple on the auto seek board and then this should be a done deal um, I'm really excited to get this one finished this one's been lingering in my pile of stuff to do for a while now and I know that the owner of this thing is going to be really happy with it because pretty much everything on it is going to work right. It's going to sound good. It's going to have a little bit more punch than it used to. And uh, yeah, really excited. Okay, so we got half the board disconnected. Uh, made a little map there and pulled it up. And we can definitely see some points that need attention here as far as resoldering is concerned. Because they're all kind of yucky. See if we can turn down the exposure a little bit. Maybe you can see the uh, crusty solder there. That's just lovely, isn't it? And that whole area where it's all blackened, it's pretty, pretty gross. And so there's our three capacitors there that need to be changed out. No biggie. So. Let me see if I can prop this up somewhere where I can easily desolder it. I guess this is as good and helpful as a place as any. And hopefully my camera won't teeter over. But once we get the capacitors out and replaced and resolder some of these loose connections, we'll put this board back in and it should be good to go. For some reason, these Mallory caps are really stubborn at being desoldered. And we'll get a exacto and Pry up the leads a little bit. That way I'm not so hard on the foil trace when I take them out. I 
That one needs a little more desoldering. Right, and we'll touch up the solder on these guys since they're so awful, especially that two watt resistor there. It is a little crispy. Hey, for a machine that's approaching 60, this thing's doing all right. I figured this board would be a lot worse. All right. Go ahead and get a yank on these guys, see if they'll come out. That's one. That's 135. I think these are all relatively the same. Another 135. This one's bigger. So I assume it's going to be either a higher value or a higher voltage. And he don't want to come out. Okay. And you're 150. So same value, higher voltage. All right. Let me get our replacements. Okay. You can see the size difference here is uh, considerable. Go ahead and push those through. I just love it when the camera loves to focus on something I don't want it to, but that's software for you. And then, let's stick the big guy in here. Okie dokie. Let's trim our leads. Okie dokie. Well, we're ready to reinstall this board and then uh, we'll get to replacing a couple of other um, capacitors on the AM and the seek board. There's a couple of connections over here that look a little interesting. Can't really see them in camera. All right, back in it goes. Okay, dokie. So everything's back in here. Got it all wired up, all of our nice shiny new capacitors there. Board's cleaned up. Let's go ahead and change out the capacitors above. Now looking at things, the AM board is going to be straightforward because it's just a matter of disconnecting it and pulling it up. 
However, with the auto seek board, the problem that you then run into is the board is held in place to the chassis via those two switches there. So we're going to need to pull the front panel again and to be able to get that board out. So let's just focus on the AM right now. Okay, so when we undo a couple of wires to the tuner, we can get the board up enough that I can get to those two 50 microfarad capacitors right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and change those out. And unfortunately, because of how this is oriented, there's not going to be really a way I can show this on camera. So take one last look at them before they're gone. Okie dokie. There's our new 47 microfarad capacitors in there to replace the 50s. So now it's just a matter of putting that board back down. Okay, well there she is back down again. This is where I just appreciate the serviceability of these machines because you can just yank these modules out for the most part, except for that guy there. And we can just repopulate and service them. And in case of the power supply board and the AM board, it's just tilting them out so that you can get to the components. But now we have to get the front panel off so that we can get to the automatic board which isn't a big deal. It's just a little bit more time. And there's only a couple of wires to disconnect there from that section. And then I'll probably just tilt the guy upward because there's nothing connected up front. It's just side and rear. So we can use the rear as a uh, pivot point, swing it up. And then we should be able to replace those couple of caps on there that are going to be bad. And then the uh, performance of this thing should be restored. And uh, we can do a final test and we'll be good to go. So now with the front panel off, we can see that those uh, switches are holding the board in with those two screws. So in theory, taking the screws up and undoing now the remaining couple wires there uh, and lifting the, or uh, taking loose the little plastic fasteners there, we should be able to tilt this board up and do enough work that we can get those capacitors changed out. Okay, so trying to lift this out. This loom back here is definitely going to be an impediment for us. So as much as I don't want to, I'm still going to have to disconnect the majority of this. So at that point, why not just remove it all, right? So then once we do that, we'll just get the whole damn board out. All right, well, we got the board out. I figured that was far easier than trying to fight it while it was attached to all this stuff in here. So now we just need to repopulate the couple of capacitors that are on it, pop it back in. Okay, so it looks like we just got a 220 here, a 10 microfarad here, and then these little temple things, 100 microfarad, 10 volt, 16 volt, or 35 volt should work. Those temple ones always go bad. Uh, I'm not even going to bother testing them. We got the board out, we're yanking them. thing I never liked about some of these is they would uh, flatten the leads that were nominally flat after they put them in and so you really have to trim the bottom of the leads in order to get the old cap out otherwise it's just gonna ream out the holes of your board when you take it out. They only did it on the Mallory's though. Maybe that was just how they were. It seemed difficult to get into the board that way. Anyway, random ramblings. I'm just trying to help entertain you while the world around us crumbles. But that's a whole nother can of worms. Yep, gotta trim that one too. hear the little snap leads flying everywhere. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Alright, so those guys are out. Just gotta take a step back and admire that board. It's just pretty. So well designed and cared for.
All right, let's get our new devices. All right, so the first one is our 220 microfarad, which I'm just going to slide in there. Bring the leads over so it stays put. Next is our 100 microfarad, which is going to go up here. And then finally our 10 microfarad. Yeah, man. Let's go ahead and solder these guys in. Okie dokie. Great. Alright. That board's all set. And we're ready to go back in the machine. And then once we get it all back together, we'll do one final test and then she'll be done. Okay, so I got the board back in, and I brought out the dim bulb tester and powered it up. And it looks like everything's good. We've got our appropriate voltages here. So we've got minus 40, plus 40. We've got our 30 for the preamp. We've got our 56 unregulated, which then gets uh, regulated down. We got 36 there. Yeah, so that little spaceship TO5 thing is our 36 volt regulator. And then we got, let's see, 46 coming in there, 37 going out there. And then we've got our 10 volts, 10.6 going out to the tuner. It's pretty rock solid. Yeah, 30 for the preamp and photo stage and stuff. So this thing's good. Uh, let's give it one last final run. Just testing the radio and stuff. And we'll uh, we'll call it done. Okay, okay. Let's just switch over to the radio here. This is Radio Guadalupe. Pretty hot tuner on this one. Oh man, lots of stations. See of our uh, auto search mode here. Yep. Oh, hold on. I didn't hook the meter up yet. That would explain why I'm not registering anything on the stations. Yeah, much better. Very cool. Go to AM here. So I would really look forward to seeing what he has on. Yep, everything works great. Cool. So this thing is ready to button up and go back to its owner. Uh, really great performer. About 50 watts a channel. 
radio works perfect everything on it works perfect so we were able to fix everything with this and uh, he's got all the knobs and stuff at home so i hope he uh, enjoys it very well and takes good care of it uh, definitely had a lot of fun and a big challenge getting this all fixed up and i hope you guys enjoyed the journey so anyways uh thanks for watching the vids and more stuff to come